call upon Willow Heron. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Despite crime rates decreasing steadily over the last 30 years since 1992, the current narrative in news media and political candidates alike is that crime is something we need to be cracking down on. Our government has responded to this by ordering up to 1,800 new officers by December to enter our communities, arming Auckland police in response to gang violence, and have allocated a package worth over $600 million over the next four years to increase police numbers in communities. While this has the intention of lowering crime and keeping our communities safe, this will instead result in an over-policing of disproportionately low-income neighbourhoods. So today I pose a question. What would defunding police in Aotearoa look like for our communities? The reality, the reality is that the role of police is to respond to crime, not to prevent it from happening. New Zealand currently follows what is referenced as a criminal justice and situational focused model. <sighs> With a strong reliance on police numbers, courts and prisons, and a focus on security and surveillance. The crime pre prevention model we should be following instead is a social and developmental based model, where community and welfare services are prioritised first. Defunding the police doesn't look like removing all first re responders for crime. It means broadening to a response team better equipped to handle specific situations with the adequate knowledge on how to go about cases, whether it be a mental health crisis, drug overdose, theft, theft or domestic violence. This could look like reallocating funding to Māori wardens and having on-hand crisis workers who have specialised training in de-escalation, but it can also look like strengthening mental health services, funding education, health care and transport. As a country, we have all the means to break the cycles of poverty and crime at the root, but we are arming a one-size-fits-all approach to a multifaceted and multi-generational social issue. Looking at the data, it is clear we still display alarmingly high rates of racial prejudice within crime statistics. Every metric of police brutality suggests unequal treatment of Māori and Pacifica in Aotearoa. So what will this mean for our communities with more guns in our neighbourhoods? Defunding the police would create a stronger, safer and cheaper long-term response to addressing crime in the country. It would allow closer ties between iwi and government as better outcomes for Māori are being reached and a new, under a new model and as crime prevention follows whanongatanga, instead of the hierarchy found seen in the current New Zealand police force. We have the evidence that our current response to crime is ineffective and outdated, and we have the means to make that change. Funding our communities helps everyone, not just perpetrators of crime or their, and their victims. I know I am, I am far from the first per young person to talk about this change, that we need to address crime, but unfortunately we are not being listened to, and police forces are just being further expanded. That's why it is so important we lower the voting age and make it 16, to actually have our say represented in our democracy and bring about change to the imp issues that impact the world around us. Kia ora, thank you. I call upon Uni Park. <laughs>